Hello everyone and welcome to Retro Brick Reviews. As I'm sure some of you know, yesterday, November 16th, 2018, saw the official release of Fantastic Beasts The Crimes of Grindelwald into theaters. Although, of course, like every movie nowadays, it actually came out on Thursday, but the official release date was Friday. And to celebrate that, today, I'm going to be reviewing the... 2016 Lego Dimensions, set number 71253, the Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them Story Pack. This it came with 261 pieces, one minifigure of Mr. Newton Artemis Fido Scamander, and it cost about 50 bucks in the United States. But don't worry, because this, this video it doesn't just cover this set, it also covers the other Fantastic Beasts set from Dimensions, so, number 71257, Tina Goldstein, which, which was a 51-piece set that cost $12 upon first release. So yeah, um, this video is going to cover both sets, because I was... I, I don't have the money at the moment. Well, it's... I went to buy either of the new Fantastic Beast sets, because, I mean, you know, Christmas is coming up. So, and I have to use my money to buy things for people so that they will buy things for me. Yep, so without further ado, let's just get started with this double review. Starting with the first minifigure coming from set number 71253. That figure, of course, being Newt Scamander. So here we have Newt Scamander, and of course this was the first Lego minifigure of Newt Scamander. And I feel as though for a first attempt at the character, this works pretty well. Starting off with the hairpiece, it's easily the biggest flaw of the figure. I mean, the sleepy, spiky hair just does not work for Newt Scamander at all in my opinion. Like, I mean, there definitely needs to be way more hair coming down, like, in the front. Like, his, there's, you should not be able to see nearly that much of his forehead. Just for example. Um, then, like, for most other angles, I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess the spikiness works. Like, it should look messy, but it definitely shouldn't look that spiky on top. Like, I mean, like, around the sides and the back it works, but, like, on top it's too spiky, and in the front it doesn't come down far enough. Sorry about that, technical difficulties, but, um, yeah, as I was saying, I don't really think the hairpiece is a good fit, but, um, surprisingly enough, in Dimensions, Lego actually had a hairpiece that I think works a lot better for Newt. And, funnily enough, and it kind of surprised me when I tried this out that it worked really well, it's, um, it's Shaggy's hair from the Lego Scooby-Doo sets. I mean... This isn't really a readily available piece now, as those sets only... We got five sets and a Dimension set in 2015, and then after that, Lego Scooby-Doo died, because... I mean, no one bought any sets besides... I mean, everyone wanted the Mystery Machine, and, and a bunch of people wanted the Mystery Haunted Mansion, because it came with Velma and Daphne, but... No one really craved the other three sets. I mean, I kind of like the Lighthouse, but, like, those two smaller sets, no one wanted. So, I mean, who knows, you might be able to find a clearance to one of these somewhere. But, um, yeah, I think that this hairpiece actually works pretty well for Newt. I mean, maybe it's not as messy around the side, but I think it still works pretty well from the back. Sorry about my hand in the shot. Um. And, yeah, I think it does definitely do a better job than the spiky hair. But giving him the spiky hair back... You can see that his face print, I feel, is pretty alright. I will admit it is probably the least accurate Eddie Redmayne face Lego has made of the three we've gotten, all for Newt Scamander. Don't know why I said Eddie Redmayne when they're all for the same character, but anyway. Um, but I think it was a valiant attempt, and honestly, I feel as though if it wasn't for the rather odd expression... This face would work pretty well, because when animated in-game, I think he does look a lot like any Redmayne. Like, I think the eyes are really good, the eyebrows are pretty good, they have a good designs for the lines on the face. It's just like the mouth. He should not have such a straight smile. I think he should, should have more of like a, a cheeky grin. I think that might have worked better to get the likeness down. I don't know, I feel so this face just looks a bit plain and sort of just staring, not much 
life to it. Which is also something that can be said for the alternate face, where we have Newt looking angry for, like, some reason. I mean, I, I just think that this is just a straight-up bad likeness. Like, I mean, same basic features, but, like, when did Newt make this face in the entire movie? I can't think of a single time. I mean, they're probably, like, maybe... But I don't know, I just feel as though they probably should have gone for, like, a scared face on the alternate side, which, thank God, they did do with the new Newt head in 75952. But, yeah. Not a great ex face, but I think the front side is alright, at least. Um, moving on to the wand, I probably should have gone with this first. Um, yeah, it's a... It's just a little brown stick. I mean, like... I remember back in 2016, everyone was excited because this was a three-long brown stick, which was quite the improvement from the four-long brown stick that we gotten previously. But yeah, um, moving down onto the torso and legs, you can see that I think the torso print is pretty good for the suit, and, well, not the suit, why did I say a suit? It's his sort of blue overcoat and the nice vest underneath. He also has a bow tie, which is a nice reference to, which is a nice reference to later in the movie, during the speakeasy scene. Um, anyway, I mean, like, I'm not a fan of the chopped off printing, how the vest continues down onto the legs, but I, I am glad that the coat continues down onto the legs, because that was necessary, and I think it works pretty well from the front. The problem is that it cuts off the moment you get to the side, so it just looks kind of awkward. I mean, I know that LEGO probably didn't have the budget to do dual molding in this set. Or, I mean, maybe they did, since now that I think of it, a bunch of Dimensions figures have dual molding. Like Finn and Sonic, but, um, I don't know. Maybe they didn't have the budget for this set specifically, but I feel as though they could have at least printed onto the sides of the legs. Just, you know, create the illusion. But anyway, um, and then on the back, Newt has just some pretty simple black lining to represent the details of the jacket, but I think it works well enough. But yeah, so that is Newt Scamander, as he appeared in this set, although I feel as though something's missing. Maybe it's his fantastic briefcase. Fantastic suitcase? I don't know, whatever you want to call it. His case. Now remember, this struck me as really odd, so the moment I got this set back in 2016, I handed him the suit the classic brown suitcase piece i think this one was from the old 2010 hogwarts express but um yeah so i just gave him one of these because it, it it just didn't make sense for him not to have his case so i feel so like back then this was a pretty good choice for it although now of course we have more options to switch up the accessories i know a couple months ago i rebuilt the hogwarts express so for a little bit there i actually had to swap out his suitcase with this sort of substitute, which was just this hand, this 1x2 with a little bar coming off, and then a 1x2 tile. Which honestly, like, I don't think is too bad. Like, you could pass this off as being a suitcase. But then, of course, now, in 2018, you might want to replace both the visit, but his wand as well, because now we have the new wand pieces. And if you have a spare, and if you got either the newt from the set or the newt from the series, you got an extra wand, which looks much better than the bar, so I would probably do that. And I mean, heck, if you have an extra neuter Jacob from the series, you could outfit Dimensions Newt with the new briefcase, which is definitely something that I am doing. In fact, I have already done prior to this video going up. So yeah, um... Taking that off and gifting Newt back his actual wand. Um, here is Newt's toy tag. It's pretty simple with just blue on the front and back and gold on the sides. But you have sort of, I guess, the Scamander crest, Newt Scamander. I mean, it has N and S, I don't know. Anyway, it looks nice. I like it. Nice design, recognizable. Yeah, one last thing I have, sorry, I just attacked my stand, is I do kind of want to do a quick little comparison to from this guy to the new 2018 collectible minifigure series, Newt Figure. And, um, I will be doing a more thorough comparison of these guys when I also get the Fantastic Beasts briefcase set, because then I can compare all three Newts, but 
for the time being, I'll just do a quick comparison of these two to see where LEGO has improved and gotten worse with this specific design. Starting off, the hairpiece is literally identical, and it's still the worst part of the new one as well. Um, so yeah, um, I think the face print is a bit better on the new one, a bit more expression. I mean, I feel as though there, there might be a bit too many lines on the new one. Sorry, I'm just kind of holding this stick so it's not very stable, but um, yeah, I feel as though that works pretty well. Um, the torso print on the new one, I like the color of the vest more, and I also love picket peeking out of the pocket, but um, and also the double molding for the jack, for the coat works better. This one actually does have double molded legs to get it going all the way around. And um, yeah, that's nice. I kind of liked how on the old, older one, the jacket went down a bit further and was a bit more rugged. I'm not a fan of how cleanly just crisp the jacket is on this one, but it works well enough. The back printing is, like, literally identical. There might be a... Well, I mean, I guess there is a bit of a difference. The, um, the... I guess the part with the two buttons is a bit thicker. You know, if you're curious, the new one doesn't get an alternate face for this series. So yeah, just a quick little comparison between the two newts. I do feel as though the new one is an improvement, but this old one still isn't bad at all. It's a pretty nice figure. However, if we're going by really great dimensions figures, newt is nothing compared to the other Fantastic Beasts figure we got from Dimensions. That, of course, being... Miss Tina Goldstein, hailing from the Tina Goldstein Fun Pack. Separate set, but honestly, I feel as though this figure is definitely better than Newt, I would say. First off, unlike Newt, she does get a new hair mold, although in this piece, it's a, although in this case, it's for a hat-hair combo, which I think was pretty necessary, although they could have gotten away with not doing it. Like, um, in the suitcase piece, they just used the Black Widow hair in dark brown, which they could have done here, but they did make a new mold, which I'm really happy with. Because it looks pretty much perfect, like the hat looks great. Nice sculpting on that. The hair looks really good, and um, this actually isn't double molded. All the hair is just printed on dark brown, which actually works really well. Like, you really can't tell. Except here, where on mine, they, the print stops a bit prematurely, so a tiny bit of the hair up at the top is gray, but that's a really minor issue. Again, the wand is just the standard dark brown thing. Well, no, not dark brown. Why did I say dark brown? The st the no just the th normal brown three long bar. Again, if you have it, I would just replace this with the new Harry Potter wand in brown. Looks much better. And honestly, it's kind of more accurate to what they had in game, because in game, the wands were shorter than three studs long, and they were more curved toward... Well, not curved, but, you know, they got thinner towards the end. Anyway, Tina's face, I think, is really good to the point where Lego actually decided to reuse it in the Newt suitcase set, which is interesting because they gave Newt a new face in that set, so I guess they realized that that their first job at Newt didn't go too well, but Tina worked pretty well because I think this is a really good likeness to actress Katherine Watterson. For this main face, like, I don't know, I think the, the eyes are really well done, the eyebrows, the smile, it just goes together really well, to the point where I would say that this is the best likeness to Catherine Watterson on a minifigure. I mean, of course, I'm pretty sure that we just have this and the minifigure series Tina to go off of, but I think this face print is pretty perfect. The alternate face print is also a face print. It's definitely not as good. I mean, it's still a nice print, but I, I think that the mouth it, it just doesn't look as much like the actress. I don't know. It could be better, but it's still alright. I'm definitely keeping it on the primary side, though. And I think you should, too. Also, one thing I just think is kind of funny is that um, this face actually isn't exclusive to the two versions of Tina that I've mentioned previously, as, for some reason, LEGO decided to use this face print for Sally Ride in the LEGO Women of NASA set. Do you all remember the Women of NASA set? That was quite... Really bad, actually. That was a terrible set. I mean, like, I'm sorry, person who designed it, but but I'm really not, because, like, the... No, don't I don't mean to be rude, even though I do, but, like, the fan submission for that 
was even worse than the final set. It only got 10,000 votes because it was a Women of NASA set. You know, progressivism. But I mean, nonetheless, don't know why I got into that. Can't wait to get a ton of hate comments because I think that, think that a bad set getting 10,000 votes based off of a movement that I kind of agree with is a bad thing. But anyway, um, torso and legs, I think, it are pretty well done. Torso especially. The legs, again, should probably be double molded, but I think they look better here than they did on Newt. And, um, yeah. Nice design for the locket, undershirt, the two coats. Yeah. Back printing is very simple. Tina's toy tag is definitely not as good as Newt's. Um, it's pr much more boring. It's just light gray and with dark gray on the sides. And then the, in the middle, we just have our locket. I guess it's a locket, necklace, something. I don't know. Pretty bland, not recognizable, not a big fan. But just like with Newt, let's also compare this Tina to the Tina from the Fantastic Beasts Harry Potter collectible minifigure series. And I think it's pretty interesting how for the main set, like the suitcase which had to have normal quality minifigures, LEGO decided to make new variants, but for the minifigure series, they decided to update these two variants. I think that's nice. Anyway, so yeah, first things first, the colors on the new one are much more accurate. The hat should be dark blue, and the coat should be sand blue, not gray and gray. Um, however, over the face print is much better on the old one. Like, I feel as though the new one... This main primary smiling face just does not look anything like actress Katherine Watterson. I will admit, I feel as though the alternative face print is a lot better, but it's still not as good as this original. Pretty good, though. I think that I think this angry face is better than the angry face on the 2016 one. Anyway, yeah, the printing here for the coat is actually pretty similar, although I do like the smaller buttons on the old one. It just seemed more realistic, I guess. I do like ha the smaller locket on the new one, though. I don't know. And then, obviously, double-molded legs is better. Pretty Probably the same back printing, although I said that with Newton, I was wrong. Hey, what do you know? I'm wrong again. I actually kind of prefer the new one on this. I mean, it's just, I don't know. But yes, those are the two f figures, and unlike Newt, I would say that um, it wasn't as much of a distinct progression here, because yeah, the colors are more accurate, but I feel as though the face print, and like just in general, the designs of the prints here were better than the new one, so that's nice. So yeah, that is the other figure we have for this multi-review, so now let's get on to the main build of the Fantastic Beast story pack, that being the Makusa Portal. So here we have the Makusa Portal Base, and for what it's worth, I would call this by far the best Portal Base for uh, any of the three story packs for Dimensions. The Ghostbusters 2016 one had way too many stickers and just looked kind of bad, and the back computer from the Lego Batman movie actually looked really bad and not accurate at all. And, and in comparison, this is pretty nice. It has some nice detail, it has some nice play features, you get a nice print, no stickers... Yeah, and maybe it, it also helps that this was kind of the first, like, actual Lego Harry Potter set since 2011. I mean, back in 2011, I was pretty hyped because, because I mean, come on, it's a new Lego Harry Potter set, technically. It's an actual building. Anyway, um, to start off with, you have a sort of a little red carpet going up to the doors at the back, which are a nice build. I like them, um... You can see that they have, they use stuff, what am I trying to say here? They have the sideways, um, well they have the 1x4x2 sort of nice decorative, these pieces put in sideways is what I've been trying to say, but you also have some wings clipped on to create some really nice looking detail, like those look nice and ornate. And you can just push those open, I would recommend giving them a little nudge from the front and then pulling them all the way from the back. So yeah, those can open, and it's pretty nice, I'd say. You have some nice gold studs, I guess, just being a bit of decoration on the ground. And yeah, um, 
the main feature is here you can see these little Technic pieces, and if I push down on one of these, it raises up one of these elevators. That's pretty nice. I mean, this is the only Dimensions story pack to have any sort of play feature. Yeah, I mean, I'll just grab Newt, for example. Just put him in here. Raise him up. Boom, elevator. And this is the only version of Makusa we currently have in LEGO. We haven't gotten, like, an actual playset for Fantastic Beasts yet, although we probably will at some point. But yeah, Oh, and also these are designed with the way they're built to well, to hold in place a Dimensions toy tag. So you could also just use these elevators to store a couple of extra things. For example, just using what we have here, you can store the Newt and Niffler from this pack here instead of having them in your endless bin or table of Dimensions, however you store them. So that's pretty nice. I mean, the I mean these are pretty plain, although I do like the little ball joint pieces up here to create a bit of detail. The lattice pieces, I feel as though maybe they could have done maybe just one of those and then add something else to create the rest of the detail. I think it looks a bit awkward to have lattice, thick lines, same amount, of, same design of lattice. I don't know. Anyway, from the back, it's pretty bad looking, but that's okay. And the last thing really to mention is you have some nice flower pieces used as detail here. And then up at the top, you have sort of these two... I guess, sort of cylindrical bits that turn into spires at the top. And then you have these three spikes. The two on the sides use the toilet seat pieces in brown, I believe exclusively. Those might be another set, but I've only seen those in brown here, with some flowers in the middle again for some nice detail. And also you have the Nexonite shield, which I'm pretty positive are only in brown here. Like, the toilet seats, I'm not so sure... But I'm pretty positive that the Nexo Shields are exclusive in brown. Can't wait to be proven wrong on that. But anyway. But yeah. And then in the middle, you have this nice exclusive 2x2 two two print showing the Makusa emblem. So yeah, that's pretty nice. One more thing I want to show you before I move on is how this actually looks on the Dimensions toy pad. So yeah, I brought over my toy pad. And let's see. Okay. So yeah, let's just put this on here, and I think it works pretty well. You can see that um, it does hang off the sides a little, and it also hangs off the back a little. It hangs off the back by um two studs, it looks like, which is acceptable. And it hangs off the sides by three studs, so like, yeah, I mean, would it be better if it was perfectly flush? Of course, but I think it works fine like this. So yeah, pretty nice stuff overall. Pretty nice design. My favorite, favorite alternate toy pad. But that is the, all. that is it for Makusa. So now let's move on to the builds of the Niffler from the Fantastic Beasts story pack and the Swooping Evil from the Tina Goldstein Fun Pack. So here we have the Niffler and Swooping Evil. Starting off with the Niffler, I would say that for being such a large build, I think this captured be a Niffler pretty well. I mean, it's certainly not, like, extremely cute or anything, but I think it gets the job done. It's mostly black, of course, but you have some sort of... Not this isn't nougat, but um, I don't I don't really know what the color is called, and we'll call it pink nougat. We have that color used for a little one by one round with a clip on the end for the nose, as well as those for the feet, and you also have claws in that color as well, which is nice. You can also see that those claws are kind of covering up. That his stomach has a couple of gold studs inside to represent his little pouch of shinies, which is pretty cute. His eyes are just the little trans black flat one by ones, which I think work all right. I mean, I mean, and maybe they could have done something printed there, but I think that for no printing, this was the best option. Just draws a little hair stuck to him. Give me a sec. Okay, sorry about that. That was embarrassing. But um, yeah, you can see he has an arched back. His arms do go a bit farther than his back, which is a bit of an issue, but that's all right. I mean, yeah, overall, he's pretty nice. The base has a couple of jumpers, three gold studs, one black. I mean, yeah. One last thing to mention here is that, of course, this is not the only Lego Niffler. 
as in 2018, LEGO released this cute little fella, who is, yeah, he's a much more minifigure scaled Niffler. He comes with both the new collectible minifigure in the minifigure series, and he also appears in the briefcase set. He's a little double molded Niffler, printed eyes, he's pretty cute. I mean, like, this is obviously better, but just to compare, like, when you really look at this, this guy isn't actually that inaccurate at all. Like, I mean, maybe, like, I will admit that the claws aren't too accurate. They probably should just clipped on the same pieces they used for the nose and feet to represent little paws, but I mean, other than that, pretty accurate, to be honest. I actually, I, I used to not really like this Niffler, but having the new one, it makes me actually appreciate what, how, what this one got right a lot more. Yeah, but that's anyway, that's enough about the Niffler, so let's move on to the other beast we have here, which is one that, unlike the Niffler, has yet to be remade in LEGO, the Swooping Evil. Now, the Swooping... Now, now while the Niffler kind of became the face of Fantastic Beasts because it's adorable, the Swooping Evil is actually very important to the plot of the first movie, specifically its ending, so I think it was really great that LEGO decided to include it here. Um... And this guy does actually have some nice posability. I mean, I forgot to mention on the Niffler, bringing him right back. Um, his claws can move in and out, and his arms can rotate up and down, and his nose can wobble, but that's it. The Swooping Evil, though, does have some nice articulation. Starting off, the head can move up and down on this little bar connection, and the neck, or well, this section, can also move, so that's nice. And I guess the head can also rotate, although it can snap off if you do that, so maybe not, but, um, yeah, be careful, but it, it can work if you work with it. Snap the neck again. Okay, so that's the last time the head gets rotated, this segment. Um, you have this nice little couple of trans purple studs in the chest. The wings look nice. You can bring them up a little, but not much. If you move the head, you can bring them up. If you move this section back, you can bring them up a lot more. So maybe something like this if you want to get to some serious flapping action. Anyway, um, but yeah, I mean, I like the shape to the body. Like how like how they use these vine pieces to get some sort of limeish detail going on, sort of for the backs of the wings. You have the two. Okay, I just dropped that. Um, you have the claw pieces used for the feet, which works pretty well. Those can move, and you can also rotate the little claw fa claw pieces. You have a Technic pin in the back, which is just used for another build. And on the base, you can rotate it, and you can also change the angle of it. So yeah, pretty nice design for the Swooping Evil. I'd say that both this and the Niffler are pretty accurate to how they appear in the film. But, um, of course, this is Dimensions, so each model has three included builds. So let's move on to the first alternates for each, and, um, which I believe would be called the, um, Stinging Scorpion and the Brutal Bloom. So here we have the Sinister Scorpion and Brutal Bloom. Starting off with the Sinister Scorpion, which is, of course, a rebuild of Niffler. I think this is an alright alternate, um, I mean, yeah, I think it's pretty good, um, you have the little claws up at the front, which are, of course, closed at the moment, just like with crab meat from the Sonic pack, I guess Lego couldn't really think of a good way to have, to, to make them look open, so they're just shut, which is fine, um, as you can see, they're actually attached using different kinds of clip pieces, but with the right angling, you can make it look pretty good. You have the claw pieces used down here for, I guess, little feet, which doesn't really work to me. Um, the single gold stud for the eye works pretty well, though I'm not a fan of just how you can see the light gray brick in the back there. Um, anyway, you have the couple of tr smoke one-by-ones, which is nice, and um, the tail I really like. I like how they did the tail. And, I mean, that can articulate again. The claws can articulate, and in addition to... Just moving up and down, they can actually also angle. Um, let me just reattach it. Like, as such, which is sort of how you get it in a pose where they're sort of the same, where the two claws are the same angle. So yeah, that's the scorpion. Nothing fantastic, but it's a good alternate. The brutal bloom is definitely a bit more interesting, though. I mean, like, when you see the swooping evil, 
Big Flower isn't exactly what comes to mind, but it definitely works. I like this build. I like the shape of, I get, it, it, it would probably be like a rose up top. I like that. I like these two pieces coming together. I like the little studs, I guess, being maybe like bubbles or something, like little drops of dew, maybe. I don't know. I like the vines coming off the sides. I like these pieces used to represent leaves. I, I don't know. This just looks good to me. I mean, not great from the back. The bottom just clearly just uses up some extra pieces they couldn't find any use for, but yeah, I like this build. I like both of these alternates. Neither are as good as the original, of course, but for what it's worth, they're pretty good. So now let's move on to the final two builds of these sets. Seven, five, no, not seven, five, <laughs> seven, one, two, five, threes. Last build is the Vicious Vulture, and 71257's last build being the Creeping Crawler. So here we have the final two builds, starting off with the Vicious Vulture. I would call this probably my least favorite of the three builds for the Niffler. It's certainly not bad, but, I mean, it's also not that good. Um, first off, the head is just kind of funny. I mean, look at that. Look at that. I mean, from the front, and I guess it looks all right, but I mean, from most other angles, it looks pretty bad at how stubby it is, and like, it just looks really terrible from the side. But, um, that is on a hinge, so you can move it up and down, and you can also rotate it from side to side somewhat, so that's nice. Get a bit of liveliness in there. I think the claw pieces are used by far the best here to represent sort of the talons hanging down. That actually works really well. I like that. And then the wings, they can just flap up and down. Can't go very far down. This is actually as far down as they go, but um, you can flap them up about as much as you want, and you can also angle them back somewhat if you want. From the back, you have these two pieces used up, and like, yeah, this doesn't look good at all from the back. No tail of any sort, and you just have the gray completely exposed, but I think that for maybe like this angle, it looks pretty nice. Ra the Creeping Crawler, on the other hand, rather than being my least favorite build, is actually my favorite build. Yeah, I like this one even more than I like the actual Swooping Evil. I don't know why, I just think this is a really nicely designed little Creeping Crawler, Creepy Crawler sort of thing. Um, First off, you have the two shining yellow eyes from the front, as well as these two little vine pieces forming some antennae. Only four legs, but I think they turned out pretty well. The two at the front you use the same designs for the legs of the Swooping Evil, but the back legs use a more brick-built approach, and while it does, definitely doesn't look as good, I think it works well enough. Um, yeah, and of course, each of the legs can move up and down and also move in and out. So that's nice. And um, then at the back, you have what I guess would be the abdomen. It looks pretty good. Um, oh, and also then at the back, you just have this little technic section. I guess that could maybe be a stinger if you wanted it to be. But yeah, the abdomen can move up and down. You can also rotate it from side to side. And the manual does tell you to put it like this. Which, yeah, creates some more life, which I like. So yeah, so I, that is the very last thing I had to review for the LEGO Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them Dimensions sets. So now let's go on to the final verdicts. Well, I actually lied because before we move on to the final verdicts, I, I, I think it is important to mention what you get in terms of gameplay stuff with these two sets. Because, I mean, of course, these are Toys to Life products, and the toys themselves are definitely not worth the full brunt of the price here. So I think it's we should also go over what you get in terms of the digital as well as the physical. Starting with the story pack, the most obvious thing you get is six levels based on the Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them movie. Each of them being a pretty decent length. Um, if you take your time in them and look for secrets, they'll all be averaging an hour long. Maybe a bit more to be honest. I mean, if you just rush through them, you could probably do each level in 20 minutes, but I mean, if you play them as you should, you'll get a lot of fun out of them. And then you also get the Adventure World, World with Newt, which is, which definitely provides, I'd say, at least several hours of 
orders of fun before you 100% complete it. And, I mean, obviously, to 100% complete it, you need a lot of other stuff. But, I mean, still, you can have fun running around in it. You get a battle arena, which I have never checked out because I don't like battle arenas. So, yeah. A lot of stuff there. And I would say that, like, the six levels are probably worth... I wouldn't... I Well, no. I don't know if they're worth $50. Well, I mean, to be fair, there are a lot of $50 games that don't last as long as this. Cough, cough, Sonic Forces... Cough, cough, which is like half the length of this story pack. But I mean, yeah, considering the bricks and that you can take Newt and the Niffler into any other world, I think it's kind of a worthy price. And I forgot to talk about Newt and the Niffler. So um, first off, we'll go to the Niffler. The unique thing about the Niffler and Swooping Evil is that unlike every other vehicle slash gadget in all of Dimensions, they're not vehicles or gadgets, they're actually playable characters. When you build the Niffler in-game, it becomes a character you can play as. It has a couple abilities, it has digging, it has tracking. I mean, nothing too special, but it's pretty nice to have. And it's just kind of an interesting idea. I like that. Um, the alternate builds are just vehicles, they are not uh, playable, but still, it's a cool idea. Newt himself is, of course, one of five characters from the Wizarding World, and all five Wizarding World characters are very similar to each other. All five of them have magic, illumination, silver Lego blow-up, water spray, targeting, laser deflection, and defendo, as well as apparition. But there are a couple of other skills Newt has that the others don't. First off, he has the ability of Intelligence, which is not a super common ability, as it was, if I'm correct, it was only introduced in Year 2 with, I believe, Abby Yates had it to start off with, and maybe, like, Ethan Hunt might have had it as well. I mean, I don't know, maybe I'm just stupid, maybe they, now that I think of it, they, I think they might have patched it into some of the Wave 1, into some of the Year 1 characters, like Doc Brown. Not positive, but, um, yeah, so it's nice to get that. It's not exclusive on a wi on a Witcher wizard, because Hermione also has intelligence, but it's nice that Nude is a smart boy. However, he does get two abilities that, well, that no other wiz Witcher wizard has. First off, he is the only magical character in the game to have the Fix-It ability, which is nice. And he's the only character in the game, period, to get the Fantastical Briefcase ability, which just allows you, in certain areas, to go inside of the case of of magical creatures. So yeah, that's pretty nice. Considering all that, I would definitely recommend this story pack for 50 bucks when it came out. I mean, I'd say that all, I'd say that the bricks inside are probably worth about 25 bucks, and I'd say that all of that gameplay is definitely worth at least 25 bucks. So yeah, good deal here, and honestly, like, obviously Dimensions is long dead at this point, so you could probably pick these up for way less. Like, recently I saw the entire pack selling... Out of box, sure, but the whole thing selling for $18. That's pretty good, and you could probably find it for even cheaper if you... I mean, like, you could probably find the figure and the toy tag, which are, like, r really just the tags are all you need to play this for only a couple bucks online, because I'd imagine that the main reason it's selling for 18 bucks is because of the bricks. But anyway, yeah, um, Tina Goldstein is a bit of a harder sell. First off, because she doesn't unlock the world. She does unlock a different battle arena, though. Oh, did I say she didn't unlock the world? She doesn't unlock the level. She does unlock the world. So yeah, so you still get the adventure world. And you get a battle arena, but no levels this time. The Swooping Evil is another character that can be played as. It's, um, it has the, um, I know it has flight. I don't know if it has anything else, but, um, Tina is also doesn't have as many good abilities, as she just has magic, illumination, blow-up, acrobatics. Acrobatics being the standout here, as she and Hermione, the two female, well, the two witches, are the only two magical characters to have that ability. But then water spray, target, laser deflector, defendo, and apparition, so no special skills here. In fact, she's she has the same skill set as Hermione Granger, just minus intelligence. So yeah, that's a bit sad. But yeah, I would say that this pack is still probably worth $12. I mean, the figure alone is very nice. Good new mold there. But yeah, and, oh, I nearly forgot to mention, there is one more thing you get with each of these. 
Newt Scamander's toy tag can also be used to put Jacob Kowalski into the game. And we didn't get a, f a physical figure of Jacob until 2018, but he was playable in the game. And he had no abilities, so it was kind of pointless, but it was nice to see anyway. Tina also has a doppelganger, where you can also use her toy tag to play as Queenie Goldstein, who is actually pretty useful, as she is... She has the mind control ability, which is, I guess, because she's a Legilimens, even though that's not really what a Legilimens does. It's mind reading, not mind controlling. But nonetheless, it's an ability that she has. So yeah, that's pretty nice. And I guess that that actually does give Tina more worth, because not all of, because she, that, that means that she and Voldemort are the only two Wizarding World characters to have that ability, although... Mind control is all actually isn't too common since I mean the the wicked witch has it so I guess that technically that's another magic character but um um Wonder Woman has it and I honestly can't think of anyone besides that that has it I mean there probably are a few more but yeah so mind can so Queenie might actually be the best thing about Tina in terms of gameplay so that's kind of funny but yeah I mean overall yeah I would recommend both of these packs again you could probably find them for extremely cheap nowadays which I guess is kind of the thing but yeah um two great sets to go along with a pretty great movie from back in 2016 although I will admit that the crimes of Grindelwald was was leagues better than the first Fantastic Beasts in fact my opinion might change but as of now crimes of Grindelwald is my favorite Harry Potter movie not my favorite story, I like a couple of the books the most, but out of the ten movies, this is the best, as of now. Again, something might come along that's better, or I might just watch it again, or watch one of the Harry Potter films again and change my mind, but the Crimes of Grindelwald was fantastic. Yes, yeah, so overall, I would definitely recommend getting both of these. We have some great figures, so figures for a pretty great deal, especially now, great gameplay, and some great little mini builds. Great little mini builds, unlike that horrible Women of NASA set that I mentioned earlier. Seriously, why was that set so bad? Please don't comment about the Women of NASA set. Although, if you feel, although honestly, feel free to. I mean, I will fight you if you try to tell me that that set was good in any sense. I mean, besides the minifigures, like, I'm glad that the minifigures got to exist, but other than the figures and the fact that we got those female, those important female scientists, that set was utter garbage. Fight me. Please don't, though. I'm actually really tired, and I don't really, like, I'm very busy at the moment, and I don't, I probably shouldn't even have made this video since it took up a lot of valuable time. I'm very tired, but please don't comment your opinions about that set please if you have a comment please leave it about this or maybe something else you want to see from my channel soon like i mean i don't know see so, yeah, um, thank you all so much for watching and good night everyone i mean I'm, i'll pr this video will probably get uploaded at like noon un on saturday but i mean when i'm filming this it's like past midnight so i guess it technically is still saturday and my voice is beginning to leave, so I'm just going to finish this up now before this gets too embarrassing. So thank you all so much for watching this double review, and I hope to see you in the next video. Farewell.